Um, Marcus Luttrell is a good friend of mine. We met how many years ago, Marcus? Four years ago? Four or five years no, ago? Uh, 07. 07. Um, how many is that? And he was on my show <laughs> because a good friend of mine, um, uh, Kathy Crittenden, called up. And she said, I've never called you up before. I've never told you anything before, but you have got to talk to this man. She said, I just finished a book called The Lone Survivor. And um, so we called Marcus, and he was on the show, and you were supposed to be on for 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I expanded it to an hour. And then I said, can you come back tomorrow, and we'll do another hour. And then I think it was a third day mm -hmm. for an hour. And... Um, I don't think I talked to you after that, and then you came to New York, and um, you said some nice things, and we became friends. And um, Marcus, I want you to understand, I don't think I'm going to be able to say this. <clears throat> after I saw the movie The Lone Survivor, mm, I couldn't say it at the time, and I actually wrote it down on a piece of paper. I have never seen anybody do anything as honorable for their friends as this movie. Um, and um, this really um, hits me hard because um, uh, Marcus was so worried about it the whole time. If you don't know the story of the lone survivor, quickly in a nutshell, I know you can't quickly, but just because everybody in this audience knows, but just quickly in a nutshell for anybody who doesn't happen to know. Uh, Afghanistan 2005, sniper overwatch mission, we're going after a guy by the name of Ahmad Shah. They put in our recon team uh, the night of the 27th, inserted, set up over this ridge, looking obviously at our target. <clears throat> stuff happened, we relocated and got walked on a soft compromise by some villagers, some goat herders. Turned them loose, relocated, about an hour or so later, a large Taliban militia walked over the top of us. The engagement started three hours later. Uh, my three teammates were dead on the ground and a helicopter, a Chinook, came in with the rest of my platoon for a QRF and it was blown out of the sky by a 12-year-old boy and killed all on board. So 19 of us went in, and then five days later I made it out. I was, I was busted up pretty bad. I, I crawled for six, seven miles through the mountains and got rescued by an Afghani village. And hey, the Taliban got a hold of me. Stop for a second, because I talked about you crawling um, today on the radio, because I asked people, I said, you, you, you think you've had it bad. You, you know, think you're going give, to you know, give up. By the way, let me just introduce Melanie. His wife is sitting next to him, because I wanted to bring Mel in, because... She's been a remarkable influence in, in his life. And, um, and also, I just kind of wanted to talk to her a little later on about the movie and the impact of it. Um, but um, explain when you say, I crawled for six, seven miles. Explain never quit and what that means. Well, my back was broken, and my pelvis, and I had frag, and I'd been shot, and I was pretty busted up. So when I say I, I, I crawled six, seven miles, it's because I didn't have a choice. If I could have walked it, I would have, <laughs> but I, I just didn't have my legs underneath me. I was paralyzed from the from the chest down. And um, I, I laid over to die. I was checking my vitals and everything. I knew I was dying from dehydration and blood loss. I laid down to die uh, twice. I thought I was at, at that closing mark kind of deal, and I just told myself, I was like, quit being a little wimp about it. And that's Stop so your billing words. ache. It's only a broken back. <laughs> right. I said, let's go. Get up. And I just kept getting up. And I wasn't going to lay down there and, and die. I wasn't going to lay down and quit. I mean, how could I Explain do that? Explain how you put a line in there. I, uh, I was looking for everything I could possibly think of to motivate me, so I reached out and I grabbed a rock. And I reached out as far as I could in front of me, and I just dug a line in the sand. And I told myself, I was like, I'm going to crawl to that until my feet hit it. And if I'm still alive, I'm going to do it again. So that's what I did. I drew a line, crawled to it, my feet would hit it, draw another one. I'd fall down the hill, crawl back up it. For seven miles you did this? Yes, sir. How All long? night, yeah. How long? Eight, nine hours. Um, uh, I don't expect you to comment on this. Probably like, this but, like 12 uh, hours, I think. It had to be longer than that. Yeah. I, um, um, that wasn't in the movie. Mm -mm. 
at every opportunity to make yourself look good, because you're the only one that knows the story, every opportunity to make yourself look good, um, you didn't. Every opportunity um, to make your friends look good, you did. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't do anything that didn't happen. I mean, yeah. I didn't look good in the movie because I didn't look good in real life. I don't think I. And I was busted up. I, I fought as hard as I could, but. I mean, the rest of my teammates, they they did what they did, and I just told it how it happened. But if they came out looking like they did, it's because that's what happened in real life. I mean, that that what the ex, my exploits and everything are, are moot at best because you know I, I'm alive and. I mean, what's there to talk about? My, my teammates didn't make it. When I, um, when I first met you, um, you were a scary dude. You were really scary. You were. <laughs> I just gotten back from combat. After. I know. <laughs> and um, and I was so afraid for you. And um, and I remember when you you came back from making this deal. And can you tell that story? Making that deal, what you said? Uh, to the director? Yeah. And the lawyers? You're talking about ending them? Mm-hmm. Um, no, uh, the deal was going through, and they were all hobnobbing back and forth about what was going to be what and everything, and they asked me what my, if I had any input on it. And I said, look, I, I don't know this world. I said, I'm handing something over to you that's very near and dear, not only to my heart, but the family members and my teammates. Uh, I was like, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, if you screw this up, we're going to kill you. Um, mood kind of got somber in there, and they escorted me out pretty fast. But I was, I joke about it. We joke about it now with the director, and he kind of laughs it off, and I do too. I was like, yeah, that's funny. But I mean, we would have killed you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's the best um, war film I've ever seen, and I think that it is um, a movie that everyone should see, and I wish. All right. I appreciate that. I know. I mean, obviously, it's got to hit you a lot harder than than it will most people because of how close we are. I mean, I know. Yeah. We don't talk about it much on TV because it's nobody's business, but mine and yours. But, uh, and I, I have a tough enough time letting my family watch it. I I wouldn't. I didn't expect you to watch it. I watched it, and then uh, I had a hard enough time, and then I look over, and you're sitting next to my wife. <clears throat> and I can't imagine what it was like for you. And I want to talk to you about that when we come back. Okay. I mean, we tried to be friendly in the beginning. I remember Axe handing over a power bar, tried to give him water, and it slapped it out of his hand. They would turn their backs to us. They didn't even want to look at us. And we didn't obviously stand so for that. Why, yeah, why, why not? We don't have to get into it. But, <laughs> I mean, why not just kill them? You, you knew. I know. <laughs> Knowing and proving is two different things, and you know that better than anybody. So uh, we'd rather take our chances with a hundred plus militia than. Yeah. So. It played out the way it did. So, uh, what was it like? Um, what was it like? Did it bother you at all to film this? Did to, did any of this? Because you, honestly, Marcus, I've never seen you healthier than you are now. Would you agree with that? Yeah, he's been really good. I've never seen you healthier. You're he I, I personally, I have a prediction for you. Your next part of your life is about to begin because this has now been closed, and you closed it so honorably. I'm excited. I can't wait. I know. Never talk about it again or have to deal with it in any way. I mean, that's fantastic. Yeah. It's Not that I'll ever forget it. No, I, I, know, I, I can't possibly do that. Don't, I don't want to take that the wrong way. But I'm just excited about, when we were talking about this earlier, the day when I don't have a camera in my face, I don't have to answer to somebody who, who, or talk to somebody whom I do not know about personal stuff, and I can just get back to our, the ranch and concentrate on my wife and kids and, and live in life, you know, laugh a little bit. I don't, I don't laugh very much. I'd like to do that again. <laughs> um. <laughs> There's a reason we're friends. Um, the um, uh, um, so d did this play a role? Did this filming it? Was it hard? Did anything trigger from this? Did anything well, emerge would, from this? Right. He would make me leave certain scenes where he thought that I was going to fall into the into the rabbit's hole again, so yeah. to speak. I guess. So he would make me leave. Who's and, he? Uh, Peter Berg, okay, the director. The director. 
So I was there as much as I possibly could. And I, like I said, I told him I was a consultant. I was like, I'm here to help you guys. You need something, come talk to me, man. I'm, I'm not going to throw anything out there. I don't want to step on y'all's toes. Because I'm a realist. You know, I know these guys are professional actors. I'm not. But I have something that they need. Right. So they opened up and, and they allowed us to come in and train them as hard as we possibly could. And I mean, you can see that the, the movie, the outcome, I mean, the way they did it, they portray the guys uh, brilliantly. I'll never forget when I want to come to a break and, 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 um, and go here with Mel and you. I'll never forget when it was all finished and you saw it and you came into my office and you put your stamp on that Navy SEAL that's above my door. And as your back was turned to me, I said, how is it? And I will never forget. You turned around and you said, oh, it's right. It's exactly the way I see it in my head every night. Whew. I know why you didn't sleep for years. <laughs> um, so when we come back, let's talk about what it was like to sit there and watch it as you and you, because I think it might have been worse for you. Yeah, yeah. When we come back. Um, okay. We have only four minutes to talk now and so much to... Um, uh, so much more. We'll have you on the radio show probably tomorrow or the next day. But um, let me just concentrate on you, Mel. The first time you watched it, you said you watched it technically. I did. And it d d d didn't pound. You were watching for flaws. And right. The second time you watched it. I bawled my eyes out. Bawled my eyes out. For everybody, for the families, um, just what the guys went through, for Marcus. As soon as it was over, I just wanted to run and give him a big hug. He was sitting a few rows in front of me. I just wanted to go hug him and hold him. Um, it hurt. It's an intense movie. I was such a girl. I am sorry, but I mean, I had a hard time and he was such a good friend to me, just, you know, just standing mm -hmm. there in a bunch of Navy SEALs probably looking over my shoulder going, sorry. <laughs> but, um, I did do that. Um, <laughs> But uh, uh, I think it was you I asked later that night, what did the other wives feel? The wives of the people in the helicopter that never, you know. Yeah, we had uh, one of the wives from the helicopter and one Matt Axelson's wife at an event last night. And um, they've been to the movie a few times. They all had their own private screening and then they chose to come to the additional screenings. and. Um, it's hard, definitely hard for them to watch, but they feel like it did their husband's justice. So it did. what else can you ask for? Yeah. I mean, the families have really embraced it and appreciated it. And that makes us feel really good. How much of a relief is that? It's huge. I've been carrying that burden around with me forever. Am I doing right? Am I, am I doing this right? Am I, am I leaving something out? Am I? Am I not working hard enough to make sure this? Just all doubts. I used to never have a doubt in my mind about anything. I know. Listen to me, man. I'm a trainer. Well, but you're carrying people's legacy. What? Um, what was your reaction when you saw it? I, I was watching for obviously flaws in the beginning. I think the first two times I watched it, and then the third time when I when I actually sat down to watch it to watch it. I just was kind of playing it over in my head when I'd watch a scene. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember that happening. But I remember... From a different vantage point. Right. I remember being knocked out, or I remember him being knocked out. And, and then when you get knocked out, you don't just jump right up. <laughs> it takes a little while because you got to put when your brain Kulab's, back in your head. When Kulab's um, son hands you the knife... <laughs> I actually had to laugh at that point because... Uh, Marcus, that didn't happen yeah. in real life. I, I, know, I didn't kill anybody with a knife in the village. I mean, you know, was it 30 years from now if I'm still alive and I'm an old man? Sure, I'm be like, hell yeah, I killed that guy with a knife. But no, it, it, didn't, it didn't happen like that. I, I was paralyzed from waist down, or chest down, actually. And, I mean, I got, I got my butt whipped, sure. I mean, all that stuff really happened. I wish it was cool enough to where you know, he would have thrown me the, the blade. But, uh, but just Hollywood. Tiffany, do we have the check? Is Joe here? Can you bring it out to me or? Just, um, oh, here it is, Joe, thank you. You guys know Joe Carey? Hey, Joe. Um, we, um, uh, 
as you know, everybody loves you guys. And what you guys are doing for um, our return service men who are um, uh, struggling, we'd like to give the Lone Survivor Foundation $50,000 and wish you the best of luck on the movie opening this weekend. Do not miss it. That's really sweet. Thank you. Thanks, brother. I love you. Okay.